a new cycle sunspot continues to boost the solar flux, and a solar storm launched on the sun's far side nearly clips Parker Solar Probe. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely still keeping our attention. As we take a look at our Earth-facing sun, you can see the two bright regions there. The one in the northern hemisphere, this is old region 2764. This is the region that fired off the first two M-class flares of the new solar cycle. And even though it's come Earth-side, it has diminished somewhat. It's no longer classified as a sunspot, but it is still boosting the solar flux a bit. The bigger story, of course, is region 2764. 65. Now, this region was also firing solar flares and solar storms on the sun's far side, but as it's rotated into Earth view, it is also quieted down. We see a few fizzles and farts from it, a few B-class flares and some false starts of some solar storms, but nothing that has actually launched and has been Earth-directed. Meanwhile, we continue to watch it as it evolves. And even from the ground, it's a spectacular sight. Take a look at the imagery from Stacy Fox, one of our field reporters. Look at the ground imagery. It's unbelievably beautiful. And as we take a look at it from space, you can see that this sunspot, even though it is evolving quite rapidly, it's not diminishing all that much. So this one might actually survive a backside passage and make it back around to the front side of Earth. We might see it in another month. Who knows? It'd be the first time we'd see that from a new cycle sunspot. Meanwhile, the rest of the disk is pretty bland. We've had a few pockets of fast solar wind, but nothing sustained. Luckily, though, the solar flux is going to stay in the low 70s easily over the next few days. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you can continue to enjoy some decent radio propagation. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see after the two M-class flares were fired by region 2764, that X-ray flux kind of took a dive a little bit, but at the beginning of June, it began to ramp back up, and this was from region 2765 as it began to rotate into Earth view, and as that solar, that X-ray flux boosted, so did the solar flux by proxy. And you can see it's kind of stumbled and bumbled along. We've been sitting with solar flux in the low 70s for about the past week. In the X-ray flux, you can see a couple B-class flares, but you can tell that we're really not going to be worried about region 2765 becoming an M-flare player anytime soon. However, we do expect the radio propagation on Earth's day side to stay in the marginal range. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see back at the turn of the month, we actually got hit by a stealthy solar storm, and it was followed by some fast solar wind, and it boosted us up to unsettled, kind of disturbed conditions. It wasn't really enough to get us up to active conditions, but look how sustained it was. It lasted over a day, and that enabled us to get some decent aurora down to some mid-latitude regions and got a lot of field reporters very excited because they got a lot of good aurora shots. Then things kind of quieted down. We got a little bump up from some fast solar wind back around the second and the third. And then again, we got hit by some more as we, as we move on to the seventh. It actually bumped us to active conditions for a short bit, but it just didn't last long enough to really bring any decent aurora to anyone. Since then, we've kind of settled back down. And this is really going to be the story over the next week. We're going to be kind of bumping between quiet conditions and maybe unsettled conditions, probably more quiet than unsettled. There isn't a lot of fast solar wind in the forecast. And as of yet, no solar storms either. So your roar photographers, I think you can take a rest. And although the solar storms as of late have not been all that strong, some of them have been pretty sustained, and that's allowed us to get some gorgeous aurora clear down to mid-latitudes, especially over Canada. We've, got, we've seen aurora all over Canada. Now, I can't show all of the shots I've seen, but I will share many of them with you, like this from British Columbia and it was seen in multiple places in Manitoba. We had multiple places in Saskatchewan, and it was crazy busy in Alberta. My goodness, there's so many shots from different places in Alberta, I can hardly count them all. And the aurora even dipped down into the United States. It was seen in Maine, and in Michigan, and in multiple places in Minnesota, 
and as we go way down south, the aurora was also seen in New Zealand. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A, and it's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you look at the disk, you can see the glow of region 2764 as it disappears behind Stereo's west limb. That's the one that's still on the Earth facing, but that's the one that fired those M-class flares about 10 days ago. Meanwhile, you can also see region 2765 as it's rotating to Stereo's west limb, and you can see it fizzling and farting and doing all sorts of fireworks, but it hasn't really launched any solar storms. Now beyond that, you can actually see the disk looks pretty bland. We do have a remnant coronal hole that looks like it's going to be rotating into Earth view over the next couple days, not really expecting all that much from that. But you don't see any other bright regions in Stereo's view. The one thing that we did see, however, is a solar storm launch on the sun's far side. Now switching to our coronagraph views, this is the view from the Earth. And as we take a look at the big black disc that's kind of covering the sun so that we can actually see the thinning wispy stuff coming off. You can see the front of that big solar storm lifting off from the sun and you can see it's almost becoming like a halo. Now when these things happen it means that the solar storm is either launched towards Earth or away from Earth and in this case because we've looked at the stereo data we know it's going away from Earth so we don't have to worry about this storm being Earth directed but it's nice to see these gorgeous halos again because that means that the solar storms are getting stronger. Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole. Earth is off a bit to the right. Now you can see that solar storm as it launches on the sun's far side, and you can tell it's nowhere near Earth, so we don't have to worry about be it being Earth-directed. However, you might have missed something peculiar. If you look really close to the sun, do you see that little square that kind of goes around the sun like that, and it just barely misses that solar storm as it gets launched, well that little square, that is Parker Solar Probe, and it's just now completing a perihelion pass, its closest approach to the sun, and that solar storm launches just after it moves out of the way. Oh, I'm sure the team is going, oh we can't believe we missed it, missed it by that much, literally. But I'm sure with the hope that we have that the solar cycle activity is just beginning to ramp up to get so close to observing a solar storm with Parker Solar Probe this soon gives us a lot of hope that we're going to see one and we're going to break another record with this mission. And that is to actually observe a solar storm as close as anyone has ever seen it to its birthplace. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the full moon on our way to the third quarter. And by the 15th, the moon will still be about 34% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we really aren't expecting much. We've got a couple sporadic pockets of fast solar wind, and that's pretty much the way it's going to be throughout this week. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a minor storm, and that should pretty much continue all the way throughout the week. At mid latitudes, the story isn't much different. We're expecting unsettled conditions with about 10% chance of active conditions, which will kind of wane a little bit. It. So Aurora photographers, there really isn't much for you to do this week. Uh, you probably have to sit things out until about midweek next week when we probably will get another chance for a bit more stormy conditions. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have two bright regions on the Earth-facing disk right now. One of them is region 2765. It is a sunspot, and it looks like it will continue to be so as it continues rotating off of the sun's west limb. So we will easily have solar flux that will stay at least in the low 70s or right at 70 for the next week, which is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. It looks like the uh, propagation, the radio propagation on Earth's day side will stay in the marginal range. The nice news though is for you GPS users, your GPS reception should be fine because we don't have any risk for radio blackouts. This region is not an M-flare player and it won't be. We really don't see it developing into one at this time. So your GPS reception on Earth's day side should also continue to, do, to be very, very good. And these conditions will continue. It looks like into next week we could drop 
potentially back into the high 60s for solar flux. Not quite sure about that, because we but we don't have any bright regions on the far side of the sun that we're seeing right now. So next week may be a little bit dull. Meanwhile, because we are just beginning to pick up activity, we still have a higher cosmic ray impingement on our atmosphere than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week continues to give us a bit of eye candy. As we look at the sun, we see region 2765, which is continuing to be a decent sized sunspot and it is evolving, but it's staying pretty strong. Now granted, it isn't shooting off any solar storms or solar flares, but it is managing to boost that solar flux and keep it in the low 70s. And it should do that easily over the next week before things begin to tank. So you uh, emergency responders and uh, a radio amateurs expect to enjoy some decent uh, radio propagation over the next week before we might drop down into the poor range. Now you uh, aurora photographers, well, things aren't looking all that great for you. We've got some sporadic pockets of fast solar wind, but nothing really substantial. So you may have to set this week out and wait until next week when we get some slightly larger uh, coronal holes rotating into the Earth's strike zone, which give us a bigger chance for aurora. Now the good news comes to you GPS users. With really no real solar storms in sight and the big uh, active regions on the Earth facing disk not giving us any big flares. It looks like GPS reception all over the globe should be top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.